Energy is all around us. We can't see it, but we can see its effects. This cool little gadget shows radiant energy being transformed directly into mechanical energy. And so, we see the veins spinning. What would happen if we could use this type of energy transformation to move the propellers of an airplane? Dreaming of alternate ways to power aircraft has been around for several decades. The Gossamer Penguin was a solar-powered aircraft created by innovator Paul McCready and his company, Aerovironment. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, this aircraft served as a test vehicle. 4,000 cells produced only 541 watts of power. That's not even enough to power your refrigerator at home. So how was it enough electricity to fly an airplane? Paul McCready used ultra-lightweight materials so that the Gossamer Penguin would only weigh 31 kilos or 68 pounds. In fact, his 13-year-old son, Marshall McCready, conducted the initial test flights to keep the overall weight of the vehicle as low as possible. The official pilot was a school teacher that made about 40 test flights that proved it could sustain flight on direct solar power. The success of the Gossamer Penguin laid the groundwork for new innovations. The air environment engineers used conclusions from their experience to design their next glider, the Solar Challenger. It was sturdier and more powerful. The electricity from these solar cells powered a flight from France to England. Over a decade later, NASA turned to air environment to build an unmanned solar-powered aircraft as a solution for atmospheric sampling. The goal was to provide data like a satellite in space but be within the Earth's atmosphere. So the aircraft needed to be really high up, almost three times as high as commercial airliners fly. Harnessing the sun's energy seemed like a perfect solution. Over the span of 10 years, a series of aircraft were built and tested. The wingspans got larger and larger. More surface area meant more solar cells and more electrical power. Remember this face? Marshall McCready? The 13-year-old test pilot for the Gossamer Penguin in 1979? He went on to be a technician and crew chief of the Helios prototype. The final aircraft in the series, the Helios, had a wingspan that was as long as five school buses lined up, but weighed only 8% of an average school bus. Eventually, this design proved unstable and could not withstand strong winds, which caused Helios to crash into the ocean. In engineering, failure is not always a bad thing. It simply means that the design has reached the edge of its limits. Aerovironment continues to be a leader in unmanned aircraft systems, and Paul McCready is remembered as an innovator that pushed the boundaries of flight. Other innovators have since pursued the dream of flying with the sun's energy. The Solar Impulse One is a magnificent prototype. In 2013, it flew across the United States without a single drop of fossil fuels to demonstrate the capabilities of clean, renewable energy technologies. It's not only the airplane, who has flown across the USA and will finish to New York in a few days. It's the message we'd like to share with you about demonstrating what the clean technologies can do today. The type of electrical engines we have, batteries, solar cells, insulation materials, light carbon structures, all these could be used everywhere. If the technologies of Solar Impulse were massively used in the world, we could already today divide by two the, en the energy consumption of humankind and produce half of the rest with renewable sources. So, do you see what's happening to the energy? The radiant energy is transformed into electrical energy, which is then transformed into mechanical energy as the propeller spins. A pretty resourceful use of consistent, clean, renewable energy. During its multi-stage trip, the Solar Impulse One engines were powered by over 11,000 solar cells. Silicon is the most prevalent material used for photovoltaics because it's easily found in sand or granite and then refined. But these solar cells look a little bit different. You'll notice that there's no metal lines on the front of this one, um, so there's nothing to block the light. So the more the light gets in, the more electricity can come out. This one has a fairly complicated metal pattern on the back to collect all the electrons that are generated inside and to bring it out to the outside circuits. But for the airplane, they had to make them extra lightweight, and so they made them thinner than normal. Bertrand Picard comes from a family of pioneers. 
His grandfather was an inventor and one of the first people to use a hot air balloon to study the upper atmosphere. His father was an engineer and oceanographer that developed underwater vehicles. Now, Bertram Picard uses his pioneering spirit to showcase clean, renewable energy technologies that can be adopted by industry. Slated for a record-breaking flight in 2015, the Solar Impulse 2 will make its journey around the world. Pioneering is about creating new solutions, new answers, new ways of thinking, new behavior. And if we want to have everybody using these new technologies to stimulate our economy, stimulate our growth, stimulate our industry, we have to make an incentive for these technologies to get out of the labs and the universities to go on the market to the end consumer. And I think it's worth having an airplane showing that it is possible. We are not dreaming, we're demonstrating it with Solar Impulse. Thank you very much. Invention and innovation go hand in hand. From the Gossamer Penguin to the Solar Impulse, the pioneering spirit in aviation showcases clean, renewable energy technologies and the real power of energy transformation.